So, folks, uh, we're getting a core set, in case you didn't hear, you missed all the videos so far, which means, uh, yeah, a lot of classic and basic cards are going to be rotating out of standard format for the first time ever. These cards are dead to standard, at least for the time being. And that's going to have some major impacts on what certain classes look like and what deck archetypes might be able to exist. Some of the foundational cards that have enabled certain playstyles are going to be going away, which means we're going to be left with a totally different look for certain classes. For instance, behind me here, Savage Roar is leaving standard format. Can Token Druid exist without the finisher that is Savage Roar? That's something we're going to talk about in this video by covering all the different key cards, the most important cards from the classic and basic sets that are going to be rotating. I'm not going to be talking about expansion cards that are rotating. We knew that was coming. Those aren't any surprises. Those aren't like necessarily core building blocks for these classes. And uh, these aren't core building blocks either anymore because they're not part of the core set. So anyway, let's, let's jump into this here, starting off with Druid. And I think the key cards, the ones that are most important to me, are going to be along the top of the video here and bigger. And other cards that really aren't going to make much of an impact as they leave are going to be the small, tiny ones down there over in the corner, those idiot cards. So, for instance, we already teased Savage Roar. That's a huge burst damage finisher for Druid that's not going to be available. Now, back in the day, it set up like Force uh, Roar combo druid is like a combo finisher but since uh, force of nature got nerfed way back when it's really been a token wide board enabler where you build a board of stuff and you use your savage roars to kill your opponent with lots of extra damage and without savage roar is token druid going to have enough follow-up damage and enough buffs to get there i mean there is arbor up that just got printed which helps it's a bit of a more expensive savage roar when you need it to be so they might be able to get by just fine but without savage roar it's going to be harder basically that's half as much in a consistency and getting your follow-up damage now obviously more cards can be printed we can get a you know, new savage roar more or less but there's a chance if that doesn't happen or it takes a while token druid as an archetype might not be able to survive on that note druid is also losing swipe which is another good damage follow-up card or finisher style card can of course be used to clear the board but it can also go face. And I think we're going to see a real trend in this video across different classes where a lot of damage is going away. A ton of reach and burst damage is leaving the classic and basic set. We've also got Moonfire over there, which may not sound like a lot of burst damage, but in combination with Malagos, which there's been a ton of Malagos OTK Druids throughout the years, that's another way Druid had to end games that is leaving. So it seems like Druid may not have quite as much finishing power, or at the very least, it's going to shift into something new. Druid is also losing Wrath, which in combination with Swipe could be a great mid-game board resolver, uh, clearing up small minions, maybe cycling into a new card. Swipe often would also do the same, where you couldn't really go face with it, but you had to use it to clear up some minions. And without those two tools, uh, Druid may have to use things like face attacks and like cards like Pounce, which are being added back into the core set to uh, keep things in check in the mid game or maybe just rely more on minions as far as the you know other druid cards here there's really nothing that noteworthy most of these weren't getting play at all keeper of the grove used to back in the day as did ancient allure but after their nerfs they really didn't make much impact starfall popped into quest druid but it really needed that uh, double choose one to be powerful it feels like without it it's not that great uh, maybe in combination with poison seeds and wild it's okay but Without that exact combo, it hasn't really seen much play in standard, and the rest of these are pretty forgettable. And I don't think we'll have a major impact on the way we see or build Druid, so therefore they're not key cards that are getting lost. Alrighty, so moving on here to Hunter, and man, talk about damage getting lost. Kill Command is gone. That's a ton of Hunter's reach throughout the years. We've seen so many aggressive Hunter decks rely on those Kill Commands to pump in a ton of damage. On top of that, Eaglehorn Bow is another really reliable damage output card, fueled by Secrets, of course, but even without Secrets, sometimes it's getting played as just you know, six damage to the face and uh, with Secrets even more. And then Animal Companion is actually a pretty big damage output co card too, primarily thanks to Huffer. And um, not the only charge card going away, we're also losing Unleash the Hounds and Tundra Rhino and Hunter and a ton of other charge cards across the rest of the classic and basic sets. So what does this mean? Well, Hunter may have to play less aggressively without Kill Command, could maybe shift into more of a value 
or mid-rangey game plan. We've seen cards like Dire Frenzy coming into the core set, so maybe it's going to be more about value hunter. Slow things down. That would be a nice change of pace. We may see less secret support without Eagle Horn Bow. Secrets might not be as good. There are still a few good secrets sticking around in the core set with Freezing Trap and Explosive Trap, namely being probably the two best secrets historically for Hunter. So losing Snipe and Misdirection doesn't hurt there, but Eagle Horn Bow might. So there could be a necessity for additional secret support to really make that package good. There's cards like Petting Zoo that are still around, but is that enough, right? We might need a little bit more. Unle Unleash the Hounds going away basically uh, does a couple things. It's losing damage. It's also losing reactivity to the board. Sometimes Unleash the Hounds would just be a great way to clean up like a token druid board or some, some imps from Warlock and make sure you don't fall too far behind. And then occasionally set up with like a Leoc from Animal Companion to push a ton of damage or, you know, maybe in Quest Hunter, whatever wide board follow-up you might have available at any given meta. So without that, Unleash the Hounds is, is another damage loss and reactivity loss for Hunter. So all in all, it feels like Hunter gets a lot slower and loses four super key three drops. So what happens in the three drop slot and where does Hunter go from a game plan standpoint? That's a tough one to answer. As far as other cards, there's a handful of decent cards here, you know, stuff that's seen a little bit of play here and there. Uh, Tundra Rhino going away might challenge like some weird combo-y stuff. Um, it's about all it's been used for lately. Hunter's Mark, I mean, it's not been that great since it moved to two mana. Flare removes a little bit of secret counter tech stuff, but beyond that, uh, nothing too crazy. Snipe is probably really the, the most uh, played card here lately, but I still didn't think it was good enough compared to the other secrets that stuck around to really be noteworthy as a loss to the secret package. Eagle Horn Bow is a much bigger influence there. So all in all, it feels like Hunter's going to have to play things differently and, and, and reshape how it's normally building out its early to mid game here with all of these super vital three drops that go in like almost every Hunter deck over the last five years, seven years or whatever. They're gone. I, I It's, it's going to be crazy to see where Hunter goes from here. So speaking of losses, man, Mage is probably the most impacted class of all when it comes to challenging their archetypes and play styles. Because these top five cards here are just nuts. And frankly, some of the ones down below I could have included as well. Like Arcane Missiles has been a great card. Polymorph has been an awesome tool for slower mage decks. Anthonitis has enabled a lot of OTK action with various Exodia decks. All of those are challenges to like small spell mage for Arcane Missiles, Polymorph for control decks, and Antonidas for OTK decks. So that's three archetypes that lose really valuable tools. And then it gets even crazier up top because Kieran Tor Mage challenges secret builds. That's been a great tempo tool for the aggressive secret mages out there. Frost Nova and Blizzard are both hits to control and any kind of burn or combo deck that's looking to stall out a board. Apprentice cuts away Exodia and like small spell mage that need to chain a bunch of spells, which we've seen a lot of that lately. And then Frostbolt's just like one of the best cards in Hearthstone. It's damage output, it's utility, it can freeze face, it can stall out minions, it can clear stuff, it can do damage. It's just like really one of the best cards in Hearthstone is gone for Mage. So they're losing archetypes, they're losing just really powerful tools, and they're losing a lot of them. So this leaves Mage in a really weird spot. I don't know where they go from here. I mean, they still have some secret stuff, and they even got more back in the core set, but it's like more value than tempo driven with cards like Arcanologist. Uh, so hopefully maybe we get a slower secret mage, whereas most of the powerful secret mages have been really aggressive decks. That would be a nice shift. Uh, without these like freezes and stalls, it feels like burn mage maybe can't make as much of an impact. So I, I, I really don't know. It, there's so much missing here. It's hard to envision where Mage goes next. There's still some spell damage stuff laying around. We got Aegwyn coming too, which adds some spell damage utility. But it feels like Mage is going to be really reliant on uh, new cards as opposed to these foundational cards to build decks. And um, that's hard to envision. So what do you guys think is in store for Mage? I think this was the most impactful losses from the uh, basic and classic set. And then on the other hand here, we have Paladin, who I don't think is losing a single key card from Basic and Classic. Basically, all of these are uh, throwaways. You can lose any of these and not really challenge what Paladin has been about lately. I mean, frankly, only a handful of these have ever really seen any significant standard format competitive levels of play. And they weren't even super important. Only Holy Wrath here has been like a build-around card. 
And that was a very niche, very specific Shrivala driven deck that without Shrivala just doesn't exist in any other way. I guess there was some, some uh, Molten Giant stuff too, technically in the past, but uh, that was super unreliable. So yeah, none of these are going to be lost or, or missed or, or, or <laughs> remembered, frankly, for Paladin. Paladin's been way more about uh, the new stuff and, and like new mini, uh, you know, sets or packages of cards things like librams and the pure sets uh sometimes fusing those together have been what's the driving force for paladin and these cards just really aren't that important i mean there's 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 okay cards here right like hammer of wrath redemption lay on hands holy wrath avenging wrath blessing of might's been in some stuff maybe blessing of wisdom they're fine cards they're just not super important to what the class is about so yeah i don't think paladin lost a single core card or key card man i keep using the word core to represent like important or key but that's really confusing because core is now a very specific thing so they didn't lose any key cards and then next up here for priest and you know I included a few key cards here for Priest, but I don't really think they're that important. They're recognizable, they're played a lot, but I don't think without them that Priest is gonna like struggle to build an archetype or lose access to a play style. So those are Shadow Word Pain, Thought Steel, and Cabal Shadow Priest, all things that have, have popped into a, a lot of different Priest decks recently or throughout the years. Uh, but Shadow Word Pain is particularly really replaceable. There's a lot of early game removal tools that keep smaller minions in check available to Priest. Thought Steel is like a value generator. There's a lot of cards too that can generate value in Priest now. Even though they play Thought Steel sometimes, they don't really need it necessarily. And Cabal Shadow Priest, there's swing cards available for Priest as well. Same could probably be said for Shadow Madness, even a mind control, maybe if you're like an arena player. So... These are really pretty forgettable, but, you know, still noteworthy cards. You could probably have said the same here for Priest as Paladin, where none of these are really fundamental to the success of the class. I also thought about Inner Fire a little bit, because certainly historically Inner Fire has powered some pretty crazy uh, early game combo Priest stuff with Divine Spirit. Uh, but even then, um, that's not been something lately. That was just like one meta where that was relevant, and uh, that's been about it really for Inner Fire beyond some memes early in the game's history. So, yeah, I think Priest can do without these cards and really not notice much. Again, there's some fine cards here. Mass Dispel, Silence, uh, Inner Fire, Shadow Madness is a great card. They're all fine. They're just not super, super important to what the class is about and how they're being played. So losing them won't be a huge hit. So next up, we got some pretty important ones here, I think, for Rogue. And... Um, Man, Rogue without Sap and Eviscerate is going to feel very different, I think. Sap just being, of course, a hyper-efficient way for Rogues to deal with threats or push through taunts. Uh, really powerful tool. It's been in a, just countless Rogue decks throughout the years, including some today. And then Eviscerate's been Rogue's like go-to damage output to go over the top. Uh, that's really, really efficient damage. Four for two is awesome. And then Edwin also going away. I mean, since Edwin got nerfed, it's maybe not been as important, but but historically for Rogue, Edwin has driven a ton of wins and been a very important card to support in the early game and really put a ton of cards in your deck for Edwin, basically a lot of zero mana stuff and cheap stuff to make your Edwins good. So still, I you think it's going to be felt that a card like Edwin is gone, whether that's from the nerf or from the rotation, I'll let you argue and decide which was more important, but still uh, definitely a key card that we're losing access to, even probably at four mana. Beyond that, you know, a few more solid cards, Shiv, Fan and Knives have all seen play, but a lot of stuff that's kind of forgettable or hasn't really been that important for Rogue. But it doesn't really matter because Sap and Eviscerate are just such big deals, I think. That's going to change Rogue's ability to play hyper-aggressively because they won't have access to these really good tools to either pump out damage or deal with stuff on board to stay alive long enough to pump out more damage or just to push through a taunt to pump more damage. And it might have to slow down Rogue a little bit, much like we've seen or talked about with Hunter as well or Druid. Maybe you have to shift to more of a mid-rangey, mid-game plan as opposed to a hyper-aggressive plan and kind of using these cards to bail yourself out of trouble. Maybe you have to keep up with the board and keep things in check because you don't have these sort of bailout opportunities. Secret Passage might still provide plenty of bailouts. We'll see. But this is still definitely a big hit to what Rogue can do. So moving on to Shaman. Hey, what is this? More burst damage is gone. <laughs> this is a crazy trend. We've lost so much burst damage. Bloodlust and Lava Burst going away for Shaman here. So that's both wide board follow-up off Bloodlust, much like Savage Roar, or just that over-the-top damage with Lava Burst, like we've seen with things like Kill Command. It seems like Blizzard really, at least in the 
classic and basic or core set want to slow down the damage output maybe you want to slow down hearthstone a little bit or make people die a little bit slower which is cool i'm, I'm for that i definitely love control metas myself as a content creator like it's great for videos and stuff i'm a little not totally sure it's great for hearthstone in general people don't want games to take like 20 minutes forever a lot of people on their phone and stuff need quick games so i'm curious like how we end games and what that looks like without a lot of these really reliable in-game damage tools available but also maybe blizzard's just kind of clearing these out and like resetting with new options instead so that it feels like you're not always dying to the same cards seven years later that could just be a way to refresh and change the feel of how games end without really necessarily changing the pace we'll have to see for now it sure looks like though Hearthstone could feel a lot slower. I also tossed in an Earthshock here. I don't think Earthshock's really super fundamental to Shaman, but I did want to acknowledge that a lot of Silence cards are going away. Uh, we lost Silence and Master Spell and Priest. We got Earthshock here going away as well, and Polymorph going away in Mage. There's still Hex for Shaman available, but um, maybe not as many ways to deny like you know crazy cards or value from your opponent, which can sometimes be fun, but can also be frustrating if it feels like your opponent just wins off one or two cards. So that's another thing to keep an eye on here. As far as the other cards, Shaman's losing, again, some okay cards. Things like Flame Tongue Totem used to get played, maybe not so much at three mana, but could deny a little bit of Totem support. Farsight's been a, a pretty good card in control, but I just kind of because you had to have it because you don't have a lot of card draw, not necessarily because it was like crazy busted or anything. So um, I don't think anything there that really uh, changes Shaman's identity being lost necessarily. I mean couple totem cards maybe an otk card with frost shock but that's been super super obscure or rare so more or less it's the damage loss for shaman here that i think will make a big impact so next up is uh warlock losing soul fire and void walker both staples really for zoo style decks void walker being one of those great early game minions often protecting other minions on board from trade so more susceptible stuff maybe like a flame imp Hide it behind a Void Walker and you're happy. And of course, Soul Fire is your over the top reach burst damage, like in every other class, going away. Beyond that, um, Warlock's not losing much. There's you know some old school stuff you would have seen back in the day, like Shadow Flames or Shadow Bolts that would have popped into some handlock decks, but none of these cards have seen play lately at all. And uh, kind of like Paladin, there's a lot of forgettable stuff in the basic and classic Warlock set that you really don't need. And they've been relying on packages. Uh, from new expansions as well things like soul fragments for instance driving what warlock can do but uh soul fire and void walker anyway could definitely hurt zoo that said void walker in particular is probably very easily replaceable just toss in another solid one drop it's not necessarily you know super important that it's a taunt or a one three it's all good it's great but you could probably put in other cards and still have a functional archetype and and frankly soul fire would get cut sometimes from zoo lists anyway throughout the years just because they were overwhelming enough on board that they didn't necessarily need that follow-up damage. Just win the board and win that way. And Soulfire is kind of a luxury almost. So I think losing both of these, it's definitely notable and noteworthy, but not, uh, you know, it's not going to cause the archetypes to like totally flounder without them. Whereas, you know, certain things like Mage losing Sorcerer's Apprentice can kill entire archetypes. I think this is uh, a more subtle uh, problem for Warlock to overcome. So then we've got Warrior here. Uh, man, Shield Block. Oh, I hate to lose Shield Block, dude. Shield Block is just like one of the best feeling cards to play at Arsenal, I think. Particularly somebody who likes having a lot of life and uh, control. Just felt good to, to squeeze into your early game turns. It's also going to really hurt Shield Slam without Shield Block, so we might need another cheap armor generator that feels that good to play. And then Corcoran Elite going away, losing charge minions, losing burst damage. Makes sense that we're losing Corcoran. That's been a great tool for all kinds of different aggressive warrior decks throughout the years. And then I thought Battle Rage was a really important loss as well because there has been a lot of um, Enrage style warriors, warriors based on dealing damage to your own board. And without Battle Rage, they're not going to have as much reload where they can, they can generate more resources for their hand and keep pushing for seconds and third waves of threats. So without Battle Rage, it's, it's going to be more like I'm all in and then that's all I had. So I don't know if Enrage Warriors can exist as such without Battle Rage serving as uh, that resource tool. It seems like they might run out of gas a little bit too quickly. So that could be a real challenge to that entire archetype of deck. And Corcron going away along with Mortal Strike and Heroic Strike could also challenge uh, things like Pirate Warrior builds or really you know face-oriented warrior builds. Uh, Arcanite Reaper, I guess, throw in there as well. 
And then, you know, this is a lot of good cards if you look, frankly. Like, Upgrade's been a really solid card. I don't think it's been fundamental to its decks, but losing another uh, weapon support tool there. So, all in all, Warrior's kind of hurting across multiple archetypes. These may not seem like major cards, but they're still adding up. Like, Enrage Warrior's losing four or five things. You know, Face Warrior's are losing four or five things. Control Warrior's maybe not losing as much, but Shield Block definitely feels like a, a very important card to uh, that deck's game plan. So, I'm very intrigued how Warrior is going to adapt and uh, come out without some of these uh, pretty important cards. And then uh, Demon Hunter here. So uh, <laughs> only five cards um, rotating out of classic and basic for Demon Hunter uh, because they really relied on the Demon Hunter Initiate set, which a lot of that's rotating. I didn't include here because technically it's not classic and basic. So things like Twin Slice going away is obviously going to be super important. Uh, but we expected that. These are the cards that are surprises based on the core set changes. And I don't think any of them are that important. Like, yeah, of course, Seder and, and Glaivebound saw play, but they haven't in the, the latest iterations of Demon Hunter. So I think these are all fairly forgettable cards. Kind of glad to see some of them leave, frankly. But uh, Demon Hunter is not going to be any worse for the wear here due to these specific changes. Although certainly some of the Demon Hunter initiate set stuff rotating uh, is going to limit their... Uh, their pressure, namely Twin Slice, I think is their biggest loss. All right, and then finally here, the neutral cards. A lot of neutral cards over there on the right. Some pretty solid ones, but uh, the ones I think matter most up here on the top left, and, and most of all, Boulder Fist Ogre. I mean, my God, those stats, that body. I almost lost the will to play without Ogre, but we must, uh, we must carry on. And um, less importantly, Alex Draza, Malagos, you know, just a big dragon. Somebody cares about them. <laughs> but uh, seriously, Malagos and Alex is really going to change what OTK decks look like. Alex Draza even popping into some, some regular control decks on occasion as well, uh, limiting some of that uh, late game craziness. I mean, even the newer versions of them don't really replace them as such. So those are going to be big, big impacts. I think Sea Giant going away is a fairly big deal. Maybe not a card we see as much lately. But it has really helped enable some wide board strategies, giving you that tall minion to dump alongside all your junk. Uh, was a big deal sometimes. That would give you a lot more stabilization on board. Twilight Drake going away uh, could change what hand deck looks like. Uh, decks that have a ton of cards in hand all the time would love that one. Uh, we don't see as much like hand lock these days necessarily, or at least not a reliance on Twilight Drake, but still um gonna miss him sort of doomsayer going away is a big check on uh, what control decks can dump in on the early game to just counter tempo their opponents and lock out a turn or two also uh losing doomsayer and frost nova together maybe you only needed to kill one or the other but both going away so none of those like uh, board freezes and clears with that old combo murloc war leader going away is a really big deal because murlocs don't have any follow-up damage at the moment they're all more uh, just board based. They lost Bluegill Warrior and Murloc War Leader. Bluegill sticks around, but he gets rushed instead of charge. So I don't know how Murloc builds are going to end games. So even though we don't see a ton of Murlocs these days, we have in the past, like Murloc Shamans and things, using War Leader to end the game. Well, I guess we've seen Tip to Scales Paladin right now. So actually, we have a ton of Murlocs. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I don't think about it as a Murloc deck, but it is. And without War Leader, they're not going to have as much uh, follow up or, or push. Much like losing Savage Roar or Bloodlust, War Leader kind of served the same spot for Murlocs. That's a really interesting change. What do Murlocs look like without War Leader? And then Wild Pirate Mancer going away, I thought was noteworthy as well. Uh, it's just been a cool tool for spell based decks to keep boards in check from time to time or enable things like, you know, the old Northshire Cleric Circle of Healing. It's been a while since we saw that, but it was still a, a, a high utility tool that's not going to be available for people if they want to damage the opponent or their own board. Uh, beyond that, there's still a few great cards here that I didn't focus on. Things like Knife Juggler and Questing Adventure and Dread Corsair has been really important to enable a weapon deck, so that's one to note. Um, things like Harrison Jones have been decent, but usually other weapon tech takes priority. Uh, even like, you know, Deathwing eh, probably doesn't really matter, but it's fun. Uh, charge minions like Wolf Rider going away. So some important stuff. Oh, South Sea Deckhand's pretty cool too. That's going away. That uh, gets played a lot. Some neutral draw like Novice Engineer is gone. So things that could have, you know, small rippling impacts basically on how we build and structure decks. But at the end of the day, um, I think the ones over here are the most important and the most fundamental to uh, what the meta might require.
So all in all, uh, some some really dramatically huge cards being lost and building decks is going to feel so much different without some of these staples like going into hunter and not having kill command i don't even know what that means like what does that look like i just no frostbolt and mage like i don't even know where to begin or how to how to handle that so it's going to be exciting when we get into this new meta and figuring out what decks and archetypes fit classes i think we could see some major major changes so all that said um share your thoughts below what what are you excited to lose what do you wish was sticking around uh, how do you think this is going to have an impact on the meta? Is mage like totally dead? How do they survive? What do they need? Share those thoughts and more in the comments below. But until then, thanks much for watching. And until next time, game on. Mm -hmm.